Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a second look at that Steel MS-291 that we were tearing down in the last big video. Remember, it's all melted on the side. We got a whole new case for it. So we're going to be splitting the motor out of the old case, getting it put in, getting it sealed in here to the new case. Now this is the new case. You can see it comes with a new lower there for it. Part number on your new case through steel. 11410203019 New case. We're going to be using a lot of, reusing a lot of parts when we do the full assembly in the next video, but today we're just pulling the motor out, putting it in, new seals, new bearings and going forward. We're going to be using this gasket stuff by Permatex, Optimum, Max Temp 750 degree. All right, so we'll go over part numbers. Um, I probably won't have links to Amazon for the parts themselves, but I'll have this gasket sealer and any other tools I use or something similar through Amazon. You guys make purchases through that and they help support the channel. I do appreciate it. Now, when we get 4,000 watch hours on the channel, we'll be able to start doing some merch, t-shirts, coffee cups, that sort of stuff. So if you're here, be sure to give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe, all right, guys? I do appreciate it. So don't just jump in and order two of the same seals for that uh, crankshaft because they are different, okay? So oil seal for the shaft one, the uh, first one, part number 9638001581. The second seal, 9639951158. Five, eight, four, right? So there's your two seals that we're going to replace. Now the bearings that are in here are potentially okay, but I'm already going to split it. So you know what? I'm just going to put new ones in and I might take those new old ones and just save them in case I need them for another unit or anything like that. I'll know for sure once we pull them out, we'll be able to, you know, roll them and see if they have anything catching or anything like that. If they still feel great, then I'm just going to set them aside for future builds as needed. Now, as far as bearings go, they're the same for both either side. And you'll order up two. So same part number, get two. They do not come in a pack of two. They come in a pack of one. So order two through your dealer. Uh, part number for these are 9523-003-4301. All right. This, will have, this stuff you'll have to get at your steel dealer in order to uh, you know do what I'm doing couple other tools we're going to need a t27 torque wrench torque bit we're going to need a temperature gun of some kind all right again i'll have this stuff linked um through amazon in the description of the video guys or in the shop tab if i can oh wait i can't have the shop tab yet so description of the video in the future it'll be in the shop tab a wide mouth set of pliers all right whatever you want to call them they got to open up pretty wide because you got to be able to grab the bearing. You're going to have to heat this bearing. Up. And I'm just going to be using a heat gun. I believe we've got to bring this bearing up to about 250 degrees for it to get on. So that's where we're at. Now, we've got our new unit. Clean it. Wipe it down. Dust it off. You don't want any dirt or grime down here in this lower. This all needs to be cleaned up. So clean it. Well, mine still has like some stains or something up here. Not to worry about it. This has already been wiped. Dried ready to go so this stuff's ready i'm gonna move this aside and let's get that motor out here you got four screws four bolts for that t27 you gotta take those out grab the crankshaft on both sides and try to just kind of lift it up in my hands no not using any tools or anything like that to pry just using my hands pry it up try to be as careful as you can here's that case all melted just everything destroyed up in here all right so you can see where all the heat was and this is just our sealant here's the inside though I mean, this thing got hot. We melted plastic. So we're going to have to clean this up. I'm thinking probably with a Dremel. And the same thing with the bottom here. We're going to need to get all this goop off the bottom, all this sealant. We're going to need to clean all this up as well. 
to make this thing look nice and new. This particular unit, you have two different colored seals. Like I said, the seals are two different part numbers, right? So we have the same bearing, same bearing, but two different seals. Now it's nice because it's color matched. Here's your flywheel side. So this side is your sprocket side. The sprocket side is brown, or where the longest portion of the shaft is. That's going to be the brown seal. The short shafted side, your flywheel side, is going to be the blue seal. They are color-coded, but the blue seal part number, 9638-003-1581. I'm going to pull this seal right up. Pair of pliers, open them up. Go over that C-clip, push it down. Brown seal, right side if you're holding your piece like I am, pulled off. This is all burnt plastic, but the seal itself doesn't look burnt. It does have a little misshaping going on in here though. So honestly, like I said, I'm glad to be uh, replacing it. I really, really, uh, let's listen here. I think I'm going to run it, guys. I've got the new bearings. Um, I think I'm going to run these bearings and just put new seals on and put it in the new one, to be honest. Let me know. If you guys have done a job like this and you're watching just to watch, let me know. Have you done this before? Have you just left those bearings and only replaced seals and haven't had issues? Tell me, like, I'm okay knowing I might have to go back and replace those bearings. I got new ones. No big deal. Um, but yeah, I'm always interested in that conversation stuff. Listen, I've been doing steel mechanic stuff for a little while. I am not, you know, some 30-year veteran in this stuff. I'm a chainsaw carver who's getting into this mechanical stuff. And so some of these things I am confident shooting a video. Some of these things I'm so-so. And so I'm sitting here sharing it with you guys, just being real. So when I run into a problem, you can see it firsthand. Hopefully you won't run into that problem and uh, we'll be able to get your unit up and running together. Now, there are some jobs in other units. I know, I got it down. I know how to repair that and how to fix that. This is a bigger job. We did put new bearings and seals on the MS250. And so that was like my introduction to doing this, which was awesome and a great experience. And this is a whole different setup Different saw, same concept here though. So anyway, like I said, we're gonna keep, we are gonna keep these bearings on. All right, so like I said, we're gonna leave these bearings on. Now, if you're like spinning the bearings, you hear a grind, they don't spin, they wobble, they're loose, they make noise. These are quiet. Chances are you need new ones, okay? Um, and if you're going to replace your bearings, you're going to want to have a heat source and a way to read temperature, all right? Unless you're going to put them in a small oven and heat them up, I believe the temperature is 250. If it's not, check the comments below and I will uh, comment the correct heat temp on these, okay? But I believe it was 250 degrees. So you'd heat them up slowly and check, heat them up slowly and check. Obviously not over gas or paper towel. Um, once you get them up to temp, in the last video with the 250 where I replaced them, which you guys could still reference to see because it's going to be the same concept. I had them heated up, grabbed them, picked them up, got it down here, dropped them on, tap, tap in place if needed. Um, then I flipped this over, prepped it for the other side, right? Had it laid down and uh, heated up the next one using um, one of these infrared thermometers. This is really the way to go. Like that, 72, okay? This is going to tell you your temperatures and it's going to get you close to that 250 mark. You don't want to overheat stuff, all right? Um, as far as these bearings go... There's like a plastic piece in there that holds the bearings in place. And so you don't want to melt all that. So just be careful heating them up. Okay. On the 250 I did, I got it a little too hot. But as of right now, I've been carving with it ever since that video. 
and I haven't had any major issues. So maybe I just got lucky. Um, what I am going to do next though is take stainless steel here and I've got to clean up this end. It's got plastic on it from the old oil pump and stuff. So if yours does as well, clean it all up. Make it nice and smooth and clean. Like I said, we're leaving those bearings on, guys, and uh, hopefully I'll have that 250 video tagged for you. We are going to go ahead. Actually, we're not even going to bust that bearing open yet. We're going to switch places here. Take our top end. And we have all this that we've got to get off there. I mentioned it yet, but if you're doing this, like, safety glasses, guys, you should probably be wearing safety glasses. Well, because this is the side the plastic melted on, we want to make sure there's no plastic in here where that seal's going to be or anything. I want to make sure all this is nice and cleaned up. We're not using a grinding wheel here, right, guys? We're just using a bristle bristle wheel stainless bristle wheel again safety glasses little pieces are flying off hitting me in the face i'm wearing regular glasses but protect your eyes all right so that's all cleaned up and i am really oh i'm really thinking about trying something i've never done before and that's just kind of trying to polish in here a little bit See if we could just clean this up, make this a little bit smoother for the exhaust port. Carburetors on this side, exhausts on this side. I think we're going to try it. We did clean everything up. Now, I said I was going to try to polish. I did polish a little bit here in the exhaust port. Something I've never done before. Kind of sanded it out, did some polishing. And so we'll see if, uh, if I just ruined this saw or not. First time monkeying around with any of that. Um, I do want to try, like I said, to port and polish, uh, maybe some cheaper saws, but I figured I'd at least see about uh, polishing this one. So everything has been cleaned, um, dusted, wiped out, blown out, wiped down, all that kind of stuff. Just double inspecting my parts as you should do as well. You want to make sure there's nothing in here. No dust, no debris, no fragments, no wire brush wires, no sawdust, nothing. This all needs to be clean. This all needs to be clean. Clean, inside out and all the way around, right? Keep it all spotless. We don't want contaminants. Um, hopefully, I'm going to do a good enough job here where this thing's going to run like a top when we're done. So, we will see. <laughs> All right, so I'm sitting here with my new casing. The piston will go in the casing this way, the longer side of the shaft to the uh, right over here where the sprocket normally is. When you pick up the top, the exhaust port should be facing forward, right? If you're attempting this job, hopefully a lot of this you already kind of know and you're just kind of going through as a refresher, but if you've never done it before, well then hopefully uh, Hopefully I'll be able to help you out. A little bit of my premix oil here. Because honestly, I kind of need to oil everything up anyway. Because I did clean everything off. But pop that crankshaft. See if that'll help. Let's get that on. Sorry, I didn't even show you guys. Put that bearing on and slide it all the way back. Or put your seal on and just kind of get it slid back. And I pull it forward to that groove. 
we're going to have to make some adjustments when we put it down into that lower case, okay? So we're going to grab the blue bearing next, part number 9638001518. These part numbers are in reference to steel OEM parts, okay? So this is like the blue one. I don't know, you can still see some brown, but it's blue out here. That's going to go on the left hand side. HP Ultra, and just kind of get it all on here. I'm even going to put it on the bearing. I'm not too worried about it. All this stuff kind of needs to get a little bit of oil anyway before we fire it up. So, got it on the crankshaft. I don't have anything on the bearing. We're going to take that bearing and just kind of slip it on like so. When you're looking at your piston and your rings are on, there should be a little, you'll see like what looks like a little dot and another one. Spin those rings so the ring is open where those are, okay? I know there's a specific name. A guy who's been doing this longer will probably say what it is in the comments. But see how these are lined up? So you got a gap. Do it over here as well. That's how it's got to go back in, okay? What I'm going to do though right now is I'm going to take a little bit of oil. Cleaned all this out. I probably don't need to do this, but I'm just putting a little bit in as far as I can reach. I don't want a ton. So like kind of just getting it in there, wiping out if there's like a ton of excess. Add wipe down rings gonna put it on my lower get it in the wrist was it the wrist pin right don't want a ton at my uh looking at my rings here on the piston getting those lined up like i just talked about attempting to carefully fit this guy right in place setting everything down flipping it up and slowly pushing down and you got to look and see where your seals fall in place here because you might need to pull your seals out a little bit to get them right in the right spot here okay because there's a little groove and they need to be just past the uh, little groove there so everything will seat down in place like it should side where your clutch is you're gonna need to put that little C or snap ring back on it's a groove there That kind of has and will keep everything here in place for us. All right. Next up, we're going to be coming over here. And we're going to be putting some of that RTV sealant down around. You'll see the groove, and we're going to just pretty much put it all in there. And the one thing I want to do, though, I want a good seal, so I'm actually going to go around. I know I put oil on the crank and the piston and all that stuff. But I'm going to try to make this edge wiped off and clean. You can put a little brake cleaner on your disposable rag and just kind of wipe all this down. I kind of want to be able to run the smallest bead that I can, so I'm taking just a very, very, very small bit off there. To open that up start squeezing some through we're going to be putting this again on the groove that goes right around here and try not to put it down in where the seal goes but you can see where you kind of need to put it in and follow your groove all the way around
do my best. I'm gonna fit that side in carefully. Try not to disrupt my stuff here. Straight up. Trying to line everything up all at once. You get like one shot to not mess it all up too awful bad. That's kind of going to be it for this video though, right? We replaced the seals, kind of walked you through on how to replace the bearings. Next video, full assembly and getting it fired up for the first time since we've had it apart. Yeah, probably going to want to watch all these before you go and attempt this. But uh, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, hit that bell, hit all so you don't miss future uploads. And I appreciate you guys watching.